Hello, my name is Tom Wong, and I'm a physics professor, quantum computing researcher, and a former high school teacher. And I'd like to share with you Qubit Touchdown, a quantum computing board game that I made to introduce the basics of quantum computing. Let's start with what comes in the box. There's a game board, a binary die that just has zero and one as the possible outcomes. There's a football token that moves around on the board. And then there is a set of cards. So there's an instructional card on how to play the game. There's another card explaining the physics of Qubit Touchdown. And then the remaining cards are the action cards that you play to move the football around the field. Qubit Touchdown is a two-player game and the rules are similar to that of American football. So I've already shuffled all of the action cards and I'll give my opponent four and myself four. And I can kick off first to start off. So I'm going to roll this binary die. And you see that the outcome is one, so the football is going to start at one. And so I'm trying to get the football to this end zone to score touchdowns, and my opponent is trying to get the football to this end zone to score touchdowns. And whoever scores the most touchdowns by the time all the cards are used up wins. So if you look at the action cards, uh, the movement of the ball is listed on the board and it just follows these. So for example here if, I, if my opponent were to play an H card, which would be the best thing for them to do, the ball would move here and then they would score a touchdown. If they play the square root of X, you see how there's an arrow, so it would move over there. If they played an X or Y, it would move down there. And if it's otherwise not labeled, nothing happens. So for example, if my opponent were to play an S card, you see that there's no S transition from this location, so nothing would happen. The, the, the football would stay put. And then you grab another card. So the idea is that you always have four cards in your hand until the very end, then you just play whatever you have left. Square root of X. So the measurement card is a little different. So if you look at this, it actually has the directions down here. If the football token is at zero or one, then nothing happens. So in this case, nothing happens. Otherwise, say the football is at I or minus I, what you do is you roll the die and then you move the ball to zero or one. I'm gonna play an H, so I scored a touchdown. So now the score is one zero, and I will kick off by rolling this die. So the ball starts again at one, and my opponent begins. Each game includes a card, it's printed on the front and back, explaining the physics of the game, and I'll just give a little summary here. So on the back of every one of the action cards um, is this picture here of a sphere called the block sphere. So you see that the x-axis is coming out of the, out of the uh, card, the y-axis points to the right, and the z-axis points up. And then on the axes are three points. There's zero, one, plus, minus, i, and minus i. And you'll recognize these as the six different positions on the qubit touchdown board. So these six points represent six different states of a qubit or a quantum bit. Um, a qubit can actually be any point on the block sphere, but this game uses these six. And so once you've explained this picture, then the explanations of each of these action cards is actually um, on the card itself. So here, this X card that they're playing, it's actually called the poly X gate. It's a quantum gate. And it rotates about the X axis by 180 degrees. So the X axis is coming out of the page here. So let's say you have a qubit that's a zero. If you rotate around this X axis by 180 degrees, you rotate all the way around and you end up at one. And similarly, if you start at one and you rotate 180 degrees around the x-axis, you end up at zero. And if you look at the game, you see that if you apply an x-gate to zero, you get one. And if you apply an x-gate to one, you get zero. And this measurement card corresponds to a quantum measurement in the z-basis. So um, if the qubit is already at zero or one, let me get the game board back out. So if the qubit is already at zero or one, 
it does nothing. And if the qubit is anywhere else, then when you measure it, you get a 50-50 chance of getting zero or one. Let me show this uh, in this picture here. So you imagine that you're measuring either the North Pole or the South Pole. So if your qubit is, let's say, at the plus state, you see that that's on the equator, which is halfway between zero and one. So if you measure this, you get zero or one with a 50-50 chance. And that's actually true for all four of these, for plus, minus, i, and minus i. They're all on the equator. So if you measure any of these, you get zero with a 50% chance and one with a 50% chance. And that's what this die corresponds to. So this die is actually a measurement. Um, and you see that that's true everywhere here. So even after someone scores and the football is now at the end zone, this is a plus state, which is on the equator. So if you were to measure this by rolling the die, you get a 50-50 chance of getting zero or one. Thanks for learning about Qubit Touchdown. If you're interested in picking up a copy or many copies for your classroom, you can get them from thegamecrafter.com or you can just Google Qubit Touchdown. They might be a little more expensive than you're used to for board games and that's for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that these are made in the United States. And the second reason is they're, they're made to order. So when you order a copy from the Game Crafter, they make exactly how many copies you order.